My name is José Sérgio Almeida. I work for the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, INPE, located in São José dos Campos, São Paulo, Brazil. Today, I will talk a little bit about the basics of spacecraft technology. So the contents will be something like this. So then we have uh, first an introduction about what we are going to talk today. Then speak a little bit about architecture of a spacecraft. Then we can talk about the, the uh, phase of the construction of a spacecraft. And then, very important, we have to mention some details about environmental and integration tests. Then we can talk a little bit about uh, some the main application of spacecraft. And then we can mention something about the more complex spaceships. We can also say something about the connection with the education. And uh, finally, we can see some benefits from space exploration. Okay, introduction. I'm going to show you a little bit a small film that represents basically how the spacecraft is launched. Okay, we can see here the uh, rockets uh, leaving the ground. So the spacecraft is, is situated on top of the uh, rocket. There's a lot of power coming from the rockets, a lot of vibration. And then the spacecraft is going up, getting speed and more speed. At the same time, is going some inclination to get the uh, curve of the Earth. So going up, having speed, getting more speed. So the first uh, stage is finished. So then the second stage is carrying on. So it's turning on and keeping the uh, rockets uh, going up and getting more and more speed. And you can see here in this move is getting inclination of the Earth because it's going to be in orbit of the Earth. So then the second stage finished, and then the rockets is already with a high speed, but still not enough to maintain in orbit. So to, to keep the spacecraft in orbit, we need speed at that proper altitude. So then in, in this condition, uh, the fairing of the rock is going to be uh, opened and the spacecraft can be exposed because there is uh, in condition of high vacuum already. So we have very few drag from the air, virtually no air at all. So as you can see here, the spacecraft is exposed to the environment of the space, but we still need more speed. So as you can see here, the other stage of the rockets is turning on to continue the impulse we need to get the final speed for the proper orbit of the spacecraft. Now we have here the last stage of the rocket operating. So still we need more and more impulse to get the proper final speed we need to maintain the spacecraft in orbit. If you do not get the right speed for the spacecraft, orbital speed, the spacecraft will return to Earth. So still continuing the final stage of the rocket uh, operating getting the final impulse we need to get, the, to get the proper speed we need of the spacecraft. So normally this takes about uh, almost one hour to reach this point, so the spacecraft is already in the other part of the Earth, so it's circulating already, getting the right altitude and the correct speed to maintain the spacecraft in orbit. So soon the last stage will finish operating, and the uh, spacecraft will be detached from the last stage of the rocket, the launch vehicle. As you can see here, it's finished, and the last stage is disconnected, normally by springs. And then the first thing we have in space is to deploy the solar panels. The solar ray must be deployed as soon as possible, and the spacecraft must turn the solar rays facing the sun, as we can see here, to ensure that we get sunlight to get the energy to power the batteries as soon as possible. So virtually this is a very typical uh, way to have the spacecraft put in orbit. Let's talk a little bit about the origin of the uh, artificial satellites. So back in 1957, the uh, Russian was the first country to put a spacecraft in orbit. It was called Sputnik 1. It was a very simple but very important, of course, spacecraft. It was the first one. It's something like uh, 60 centimeters diameter, uh, about 83 kilos. It was very important because 
we proved that we can put an artifact in space and keep it in orbit for a certain time. This particular spacecraft was in orbit about three months, operating for about three weeks, sending just a single, simple uh, beep beep to the ground and the internal temperature as well. So we proved we can send a spacecraft in orbit and maintain it for a certain period. This is a very, very important step. So just after that, in uh, January 1958, the United States uh, sent their first satellite, it's called Explorer 1. So it was very important as well because technically and scientifically he could uh, discover the Van Allen radiation belt. So it's not a very important step for the space exploration. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some physics here. Like uh, what's required for a satellite to remain in orbit? What we need that? So we need speed. For each altitude of the spacecraft, we need the proper speed. If you have lower speed, as I said, the uh, spacecraft will return to Earth. So if you have higher speed, the spacecraft will tend to go out of the orbit, go higher altitude of the orbit. So to maintain orbit in a certain altitude, we need the correct speed. So that means that, uh, as we can see here, it's a very simple example. If we have like a, a symbolic, like a cannon, if we throw a, a ball from the cannon in a small impulse, the ball will return to Earth very soon, like in, in a number one situation. If you have a ball with a little bit more impulse, we can get a little higher distance, but still number two will return to Earth. If you put a little higher impulse to the ball from the cannon, it can go further, but still return to Earth. In the number four situation, we have a higher impulse, a higher speed, but still it's not enough, the ball will return to Earth. Number five situation, still more and more impulse, more speed, but still the ball will return to Earth. If you have the proper speed that the ball leaving the cannon, doing a turn around the Earth and coming back at the same point he left the first play, first moment, we can tell that the, the ball or the spacecraft, in our case, will maintain in orbit at least for a certain time. That's it, basically the idea of having a spacecraft orbiting the Earth. Okay, talk a little bit about CubeSats. CubeSats has been very, very important day by day now because they have something special. They are very, very small. Typically, they follow a standard configuration like a cube of uh, 10 centimeters edge and the mass normally less than 1.33 kilograms. Why they are so important? Because they are, you know, focus the educational uh, uh, community. So students can build, can design and build and launch small spacecraft. So it's a good opportunity for them. And also, because it's a spacecraft, they can learn how to do a spacecraft just from the beginning to have all the phases of the spacecraft to reach the final configuration to launch spacecraft. So it relatively is like making a, a, a large spacecraft, having this, the idea of the, all the phases to construct to build a spacecraft. So education of this is very, very important for the students, so they can build that. And also, normally, typically we use uh, COTS, non-qualified space-qualified components. They can have low-cost components and make the spacecraft with lower cost. Obviously, the uh, lifetime of the satellite could be much shorter, but that doesn't matter. The, uh, the, the focus of this satellite are more educational, so it can last less time with no major problems because we are looking for, for, for education only. But another important part of CubeSats nowadays is a very good a place to test new technology. So putting new technology, large and complex and high, a very expensive spacecraft, sometimes is not good because you put some risk on the big spacecraft, big price spacecraft. So if you use the CubeSats to test new technologies, if you can put, if you can install and fit new technology on the CubeSats, you can test in orbit if they operate properly before going for larger and more complex and more expensive spacecraft. So you can test new technology on small CubeSat in space and check if they work properly in space before putting in the uh, higher cost 
spacecraft. This is another example of CubeSat. This is actually made in Brazil. NanoSat CBR1 is flying in space very well. So it's another example of a successful CubeSat in space. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the constructing phase of a spacecraft. This is very important because here I can try to show the different phases of the life cycle of a spacecraft. First one we call specification. So in the specification phase, uh, people sit on the table and define the main purpose of spacecraft. What spacecraft is going to do in space? Why we need that spacecraft in particular? So that's what we call specification. It's a very basic part of the design of spacecraft. It's the beginning of the design of spacecraft. Just the main purpose of spacecraft. The second phase we call preliminary design. In this phase, after having the specification of the spacecraft, we go to generate the initial conception of the spacecraft to attain the specification. So here we go for some design, a rough design, what are going to be the main parts of spacecraft roughly, what we need, the, the geometry, the size, roughly the size of the uh, solar rays, so the main part of spacecraft, not in detail yet, just the preliminary design. After finish that phase, we go for the tail design of the spacecraft. So here, F group go to their parts, uh, their uh, desks to do the detailed design of each section of spacecraft. So then the structural guys are going to work on the structural model of the spacecraft. The thermal guys, they know what they need, they want, they are going to design the thermal parts of the control of the spacecraft. Uh, the propulsion seats, they are going to do their job as well to make sure the propulsion seats will attend the specification and pre pre preliminary design of the spacecraft. So here all the detail, detailed uh, design of spacecraft are made. Okay? Finishing the detailed design, we start the manufacturing because we have all the design ready already. They are ready. So then we build the, all the subsystem and the equipment to contain the spacecraft in the future. So this is the manufacturing. So all the uh, the shops are going to be prepared and building every single part of the spacecraft and putting together as boxes, for instance, or tubing, pipeline, they are building in this phase of manufacturing. Okay? Sometimes they are purchased for some companies in certain cases. Sometimes they are making in-house. The next phase we call assembly. So assembly we have the main structure of the spacecraft empty and then we put, we stall physically all the uh, equipment inside the structure of spacecraft. We put in there, we use bolts and nuts, uh, some resin sometimes, so we assemble the uh, equipment inside the structure of spacecraft, okay? But after, just after the assembly, we have the integration. So we call integration is virtually all the interconnection, interconnection of the uh, equipment using cables. So we put a lot of interconnecting cables inside the spacecraft because normally one equipment are going to communicate with other equipment installed in the structure. So in this phase, we do all the interconnecting of the uh, equipment that are going to work together in the spacecraft. Just finishing the integration of the spacecraft, we take the spacecraft for testing. Testing is very critical. It takes sometimes long period, like 8, 9, 10 months in laboratory. Why? Because we have to make sure that spacecraft is, will be ready to be launched and to fly. So normally, usually, we do not have a way to repair the spacecraft once it's launched in orbit. So very few situations you can go there. We used to have a space shuttle, we go there to repair the uh, Hubble telescope, for instance, we don't, we don't longer, we do, do, we do not do that any longer. But very few situations, normally the spacecraft are orbiting higher than this altitude, so there's no way to repair. So that means we have to test, test, and test again in ground to have the probability of failure very, very small, okay? So the spacecraft normally leaves the laboratory virtually ready to fly, to be launched and to fly with a very low probability of failure. I'm not going to talk about tests at this moment here. We have another talk about only about tests later on. But tests are very important to make sure spacecraft is ready 
to be launched and to fly. Okay, uh, I'm going to show a little bit more, a little bit about what kind of tests we do. So the next phase in this sequence here of life, life cycle spacecraft is the launch. After the spacecraft is being tested and qualified in the laboratory on the ground here, we go for the launching phase. So the spacecraft is taken to the launch pad, put in the top of the rockets, takes weeks again to prepare that uh, configuration, and then the spacecraft is finally launched using a rocket for that. As I showed at the beginning of this presentation, so the rocket takes the job of sending the spacecraft put in orbit or in another condition for the interplanetary flight. So this takes a, a very critical situation because the failure is, is critical, could happen failure situation, a lot of energy taking place. We have to get a proper condition, proper speed, proper uh, angle to make sure spacecraft is going to the right orbit. So launching is very critical always. This is the launching phase of the spacecraft. Okay, after the launching phase, there's a very important phase of the life cycle of spacecraft. Sometimes we don't remember that, but it's very important. We call commissioning. So commissioning phase of spacecraft is important because the team that made the spacecraft, built the spacecraft, they want to make sure the spacecraft is operating okay according to the design in flight conditions. So this can take days, weeks, or even several months to make sure the spacecraft is operating properly in space. So they check all the thermal condition, all the attitude control, the right orbital condition, the positioning, all the equipment instruments, they are working properly. So that's what we call the commissioning phase of the spacecraft. They check if the spacecraft is operating according to spec in space. This is not the usable part of spacecraft yet, just checking if the spacecraft is working properly in space uh, as expected to. Okay? After that, yes, we start the utilization of spacecraft. The utilization of spacecraft can be, of course, the uh, part of the uh, users. For communication, for example, they use, start using like a television, telephone uh, connections, uh, internet, all sorts of communication they can use the spacecraft. Or for remote sensing, they start using making the uh, to making the image of the ground of the spacecraft, or this is remote sensing. For the scientific spacecraft, they starting measuring the all the condition space uh, uh, in the outer space. So they are using their, their spacecraft for this purpose, all the sensors, special sensors to use that. So that's utilization. Expect to be the longest phase of the spacecraft. For example, for a communication spacecraft today, we can reach 16 years of use of spacecraft or longer, okay, because they are put in high altitude, they are very reliable for this purpose. This is the lifetime utilization of the spacecraft for the final users, okay? And then we have the final phase of spacecraft, it's very important every new you know, the future that we need to discard the spacecraft. So every spacecraft being put in orbit now they have to find a way to be discarded one day eventually. So we have to have to bring the spacecraft back to Earth somehow, sometime after the useful utilization of the spacecraft.